1-866-679-4522 and 1-866-6775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national national real estate and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest and first timer on Ron Siegel Radio. John Carlson is in the house. Raymond James Financial Services, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And yes, of course, another beautiful day in Ron Single Radio. We are celebrating. Okay, okay, I'm not going to tell you, may the 4th be with you. I'm not going to say that this morning. It is Star Wars Day, Weather Observers Day. It is what it is. Orange Juice Day. Can I get maybe a little Tito's in that, please? Uh, Foster Care Day. I know it's Firefighter Appreciation Day, so we have that on our social channel. GenevaCares.com. GenevaCares.com if you want to... Uh, uh, nominate a firefighter of the day. So we are looking for that. Put that out there, GenevaCares.com. Hey, you know something? Why don't you just use that as our trivia answer today? Who's your favorite firefighter? RSRTrivia.com. RSRTrivia.com. And we'll just select a random person who fills that in throughout the month. We'll do it at the beginning of next month. $100 Amazon gift card will be for the winner. Dow Jones right now. Down 206 points. S&P 500 down 55 points. NASDAQ down 374 points. Ow! Oil up $1.07 a barrel. 65.56 a barrel right now. What is that doing for you and me? Well, gasoline, that's where we can feel the oil prices the most. $2.57.3 is the average gallon of a gas gallon of gasoline. <laughs> Not in Calizuela. That would be in Mississippi. If you want to get cheaper gas, well, maybe you go to $3.80 a gallon. Again, not in Calizuela. That would be in the oil-producing state of Hawaii. I don't even know if they produce any oil in Hawaii. 291.3, that's the national average in Calizuela because we like taxes and regulation. $4.05 a gallon, four oh five a gallon here in Calizuela. And if you want to compare that to a year ago, one dollar. Uh, let's see if we can get that in here. I think it was a dollar seventy-eight a year ago in Calisuela. Uh, I'll have to get that for you. But I know it's a lot more now than what it was. Unbelievable how we continue to keep going up. And I, I, I know Facebook doesn't like when I say that it's the president that's controlling this. I understand it's not the president that does it himself. It's his policies that cause all the problems. Can you say hello to the border? 274 and a half a year ago in Calizuela, 405 right now in Calizuela. So what's that, about a dollar and a quarter a gallon that we're paying extra? Elections have consequences. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, the 10-year Treasury down just a little bit. Uh, 158 is the yield on the 10-year Treasury. Hey, you can go to Germany, though, and you can still get a negative yield over there. Japan, they've gotten above that negative line. And we've been talking about this for a long time. They were negative for a long time. Well, you can almost get one-tenth of 1% if you give your money to them for 10 years 
in Japan. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a shame, but that's kind of the way it is. Uh, but hey, you know something? We're trying to get there. We're working our best to get to the same thing here in Calizuela, aren't we? Isn't that the idea is to see if we can become Germany or UK or any of those other socialist countries? Uh, man, oh man. Hey, did you, have you listened to any of the stuff about Rudy Giuliani? Fascinating when you listen to it. Not on the lame media, but can you... Can somebody help me here? I, I want to just try and understand this. I, I am a simple man. But for some reason, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and MSNB Hee all had the exact same headline, and they were all wrong. Now, if they had the exact same headline and they're all wrong, does that sound like collusion to you? I mean, it sounds like someone must be doing something along those lines to me. Someone must be telling them what to say. How do you... A news service, well, wait a second, they're not a news service, they're stenographers, but that's a different story, right? But here's the idea is, if you get everything the exact same wrong way, when I was in school, right, if I, I didn't do this, but there, I might have heard of people that would look over a friend's shoulder and all their tests came out with the same wrong answers. Huh. Did, was there any, any concern there about maybe a little plagiarism? Maybe there was some copying, cheating going on? You think that could be what's going on at the New York Times, Washington Post? Maybe they're getting their their news, supposed news, from, they call it K Street. It's the, the people in, in Washington, D.C. that work for the Democrat National Committee. That would be the people that run ABC, NBC, MSNB, Hee Haw. That would be the Democrat National Committee. Unbelievable. Uh, moving right along. Hey, the savior of the country right now, probably one of the most important people that we have in the country, Senator Joe Manchin standing against the progressive mob once again. I hope that man has some bodyguards. Uh, he says he will not support D.C. statehood now. That's a good one. I mean, I, just because it's unconstitutional doesn't mean anything to Democrats nowadays, does it? Uh, unbelievable. Let's keep on moving right along. What else is going on in the news? Uh, well, more, more on Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, there was more there. And, you know, they raided his house. How, how would you like that if it happened to you or your attorney? Right, think about this one. You have an attorney representing you, and the adversaries go in and get to take all of your attorney's confidential information. And then they say it might be used against you. Now, you know that I've been sharing with you a lot of, of information from the Divorce Lending Association, right? I've got my credentials there as a certified divorce lending professional. But here's the issue. Do you think it would be a, a conflict of interest if I give the information from one attorney's side to the other attorney's side? Well, that's what they're doing with Giuliani. Does that make sense? Right? So he's, he's working as a, his client was the president of the United States. And they decide they're going to take all of his work. Now, some of it they took under a, a subpoena or court order, some of it they just did clen, uh, clandestine, right? Or, or, or not telling anybody, whatever the right terminology is. You know, I'm just a simple guy, right? So they, they go in there and they just hacked his cloud account to get the information. Could you imagine if they did that to you? What would you say then? I mean, right now the media is that they don't care, right? Because if it's Fox News, if it's Rudy Giuliani, that's all okay. What do you think it would be if we were talking, remember we talked yesterday a little bit about the Black Lives Matter organization, right? Their $26,000 weekend excursion to Malibu. Now, what would happen if all of the commentary of what went on there was publicized, right? Give it to, just get out there and just go take it. Unfortunately, it's our own Department of Justice that's doing these things right now. But we, we, we better move right along. MSNB hee-haw again in the news, Tiffany Cross, to make racist statement about Senator Tim Scott. Do you think anybody's going to stand up against her? I doubt it. Tim Scott, pretty articulate gentleman. I've, I've been listening to him for quite a while, and he's got a lot of good things to say. Have you ever listened to him? I know that if it's on MSNB hee-haw, they're not going to tell you what he has to say legitimately. They're probably going to question the fact of, uh, of his background. right? So if you can't question what he's doing, why don't you just attack the individual? Yeah, that seems like the way it is right now. Now, the fifth graders gave a little schooling to the president and his wife yesterday. Did you see that one? 
I, and I know that it was probably the only thing on the president's schedule. I should look and see because I do get the president's schedule here from our private news service. I probably have it here. And it doesn't take very long to share it with you. There's generally one item on the president's schedule. I wish that I could get away with only having one item on my schedule and still collect that $400,000 a year salary. I don't think we put it in our notes today, but we generally have that one item. But yesterday I noticed he did go to a fifth grade, I think it was a fifth grade class that he went to, and they shared with him Yorktown, was it uh, Yorktown Elementary School, it says right here. So he went over there and the kids told him, well, you know, if we get a little bored, Mr. President, we just go take a nap during the school day. I don't remember fifth grade. That was a long time ago for me, but I don't remember being able to go and take a nap whenever I wanted to just because I got bored. Might have caused a little trouble here and there, but I don't think I took a nap. But that is just a different issue. But they told the president they don't like this schooling. Now, that will probably be retracted tomorrow by the time the school districts and the uh, not the district, the unions get to it. Because we do know that they kind of tell the president what to say and when to say it. But that's a different issue. But I did notice uh, he was, did have his mask on. Mrs. Biden had her mask on as well even though they were indoors and the kids, uh, that's not a problem there with kids and passing the, the, the virus, they're vaccinated. Are we gonna ever get rid of the masks? Uh, maybe that's why people don't wanna wear the mask. Maybe that's why people don't believe in the mask because they watch the supposed leaders of the country, right? They get fully vaccinated and they're not wearing masks. So why should we get vaccinated? Uh, and the Harvard Journal of Medicine now, they said the same thing. You know, I'm, I've told you this before. I'm a simple guy, and I don't understand a lot of medicine. I can't spell science. But I did understand this. The Harvard School of Medicine, their Journal of Medicine came out, and they did make a comment. They don't know the long-term effects of the, the vaccines. Have we not talked about that? Is that not just common sense that they don't know the long-term effect of the vaccines? They were talking about them with respect to young ladies who may have a desire to get pregnant, reproduce at some point in time, right? So are you getting vaccinated? I mean, I don't care, right? I mean, I wish more people would just say the same thing that I've said to you right now. It's your body, your choice. Oh, no, we're not allowed to say your body, your choice when it comes to vaccines. That's a different issue. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, financial planning, we're going to talk about four big incentives for homeowners to sell now. And yes, we've got a featured home segment brought to you by my favorite lender.net. All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Off air number 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. But the replay is available. Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. And we'll be back in just a few. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Blue Water Credit Repair is the industry leader in fixing bad credit. Did you know a 40-point increase in your credit score can save you $40,000 on a home loan and $4,000 on a car loan? You deserve good credit and peace of mind. Take the first step today and go to bluewatercredit.com and register for a free consultation from one of their credit repair experts. That's bluewatercredit.com. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at ronismylender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at ronismylender.com. Again, ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. ronismylender.com. Premium of your retirement does not include losing your house. However, due to today's lower stock market, higher medical bills, and taxes, many retirees face this very problem. 
This is why it is necessary that you, as a baby boomer, considering retirement within the next 10 years, understand reverse mortgages and what one could do for you or your parents. A reverse mortgage could make it possible for you or your parents to travel, buy a second home, or start a new business. For more information about reverse mortgages, just call our off-air number at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit realestateradiowithron.com and click the free workshop button. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990 800 306 1990 the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. Give me a call at 800 306 1990. I'll put you in touch with Kendra. She can help you out over there. Dow Jones now down 124 points. NASDAQ down ooh, 354 points. Ooh, that's, a, that's a painful number to share with you. The SP 500 down 54. 10 year Treasury down one tick. That's the yield, and the bond is down. It's down now. It's down five. When the bond goes down, that means interest rates go up. It is a mathematical function. But why is all this happening? What does it mean for you? What's driving all these things? Well, as I shared with you, the markets are down. Core Logic. Yeah, they've been late to the party all year. Maybe actually for a little more than a year right now. Released their home price index report for March showing that home prices increased 2% during the month. 2% for the month. Wow. Prices rose 11.3% on a year-over-year basis, which is up from 104 year over year number reported last month. Now, if you remember about a year ago, I told you CoreLogic was forecasting a negative 6.6% uh, forecast for their growth. Negative 6.6. Well, they've, they've increased that now. They're now they're all the way up to forecasting three and a half percent. But uh, we got two percent in one month, and they're saying one percent next month. In my math, that's three percent, and they're saying three and a half percent for the whole year. Can somebody help me out with that math? I, I'm just a simple guy. Top metros: Phoenix up 18.3 percent, San Diego 14 percent, Denver up 12 percent. Now, some people may like that. I am not a fan of numbers that are growing that fast because if they go up that fast, they can go down that fast. I like slow and steady. I know I look like a whale, but I like the turtle speed. Richmond Fed President Barkin spoke on CNBC yesterday, first to mention what, quote, unquote, substantial progress he believes the Fed is looking for before tapering. That means where they stop spending $5 billion a day on buying back uh, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. He said he's looking for employment to population ratio to show a reading above 60% from the current level of 57.8. Almost seems like the Fed is creating new metrics because they don't want to stop buying. You know, it's kind of like when you get a, on a, a sugar high, right? You don't want to stop having sugar. Well, they've been buying all these bonds for so long. Do you think they really want to stop buying them? I ask you the question. It's for you to decide. That is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990. So let's learn a little bit about financial planning. John Carlson is in the house. He is a certified financial planner. So that means he's a smart guy. I'm a simple guy. So let's think about some of the things. What do, we, what do you want to know? I mean, you can put that in the chat window. And I'm not sure if I'll read them on the chat window, but you can put them in there anyway. But John and I get to chat about these things, and you get to eavesdrop. 
So welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. So retiring. Now I'm an old guy. So and and I got kids that are 25 and 30 years younger than I am. Do we have, need to do the exact same things when we're thinking about retiring? No, absolutely not. It, it should be really customized to the client. Okay. And get them thinking about um, how much risk they can tolerate and how their cash flow is going to need to look for the rest of their life for a long period of time. How would they know what how much risk they can tolerate? If you know, because I've got a a 31 year old, a 29 year old, and a 26 year old, and I, I don't know. I know when I was 26, I didn't know squat about squat, but I thought I knew everything about everything. Yeah, um, the way I like to present it for clients is to think about how frequently they're going to look at their balance, uh, because if you're used to just looking at a bank balance and you never see that decrease, unless you're spending the heck out of it, um, you can get surprised by fluctuating markets, and you can get a monthly statement or a quarterly statement, and you could be surprised by a 5% decline if you're expecting nothing. So uh, it really just comes down to kind of setting their, their expectations for how much their balance that they start with could be reduced by in a moderate sell-off. And so days like today, clients should be aware that it's going to make your value on your statement look bad tomorrow. Do I want to even look at it? Yeah. You want to do I? You, you generally do because you want to know yourself. You want to understand your ability to tolerate fluctuation, but you mainly want to have a partner that can help you uh, not make irrational decisions just because of fluctuation. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it and I say, you know, and obviously being older, I'm not old, but older, right? So I've got the much shorter time horizon. So I want things that I know are going to be around longer than I am. That's a good idea. Right. And the, the kids, I, I, I mean, my, my youngest, uh, he, he has a little bit of Disney stock, right? And I think it's great because he gets to watch it. And he tells me what it does every day. But my comment to him is we're not selling. Right. So I wonder whether it, if it's more nerve wracking when you look at your portfolio on a, a daily basis or I'm a big proponent of having professional guidance. Yeah. Well, I think that there are people who can not panic if they see a lot of movement on a given day or minute by minute if they're doing it that frequently. But being a buy and hold investor, if you own quality, generally over time, it should help you beat inflation. So how do we define quality? I had this conversation the other day because um, my oldest son was given some General Electric stock about 20 years ago yeah. and was told, well, you know, some General Electric always goes up. Well, we've seen that uh, over the last 10 years, General Electric uh, probably doesn't always go up. How do I know? How do I define quality and how often should I be looking to see if it's still quality? Yeah, it's not a hard and fast rule for how you define quality. There are certain ETFs and others that actually okay. have, have the name. I'm a simple guy, John. ETF, yeah. what is that? Exchange traded funds. Okay. They trade like a stock during the, the market hours, but they can have stocks or bonds in them okay. um, or other instruments, but typically stock-related ETFs um, would have, uh, they could have quality in the name. And then that metric or that benchmark that they're using tends to screen out some of the junkier companies. The junkier companies might not have enough cash on their balance sheet. They might have too much debt compared to the equity in the company, so things like that. And it can help you kind of weed out some of the smaller, less consistent companies that don't have enough cash. Would it be fair to say that some of the um, whoever is controlling that ETF is going to have maybe better information or know what they're looking at better than I would as a layperson? Almost always. Okay. Especially when the ETF has been around for a bit longer. So what is that? How do you define a bit longer? Well, right now there's so many that have been developed in the last few years that are really cutting edge. They're really high quality. And some of the manufacturers, I won't name them, of the ETFs have, have done an amazing job of streamlining that process and getting new ETFs approved very quickly. So it doesn't have to be old to be high quality. But in terms of the assets and the ETF, if you go with a very small ETF, there can be issues with how how nimble it is and how efficiently it can get new people into and out of that ETF. It's a lot of information right there. Yeah. So I've always kind of looked at, at some of the, the ETFs and, and, and municipal funds, or, or not municipal funds, but uh, I don't know, whatever they're called. The, 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 fun, uh, the funds that they're, that they're, they, you're buying a basket of stocks, oh, right? Yeah, the mutual, mutual, mutual funds, funds, mutual funds. Yeah. And you look at those and you say, okay, what is the, you know, how does it compare to its benchmark three, five, 10 years? Right. But if you're talking about an ETF that's new, how do I know? Um, 
What, what would be something that I would be wanting to look for? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, looking at multi-year periods is generally a really good way to gauge how something's doing compared to a benchmark. Okay. When you pick a benchmark, you should understand what that's kind of telling you, what kind of exposure you're getting. So one of the most common benchmarks in the world is the S&P 500. Right. Right, 500 large U.S. companies. And that tells you how combined, how they've done. But a lot of people don't realize that it's weighted by the largest companies get the largest percentage weighting in that ETF, that that index, right? In that index. So so if the largest companies have done extremely well, the index has done. So better. it can skew it. So it can, there can be a lot of skew. So if Apple's done really good over the last year or two, and they're they're I think they're the largest company in the world, but they still are. Okay, so then whoever number five hundred is, they might be a, a dog or they might be a, a thoroughbred. But they're going to be overshadowed. That's right. But they may even just benefit from the flow of money into that index, the S&P 500. Tr ah. Trillions of dollars around the world are making sure that they have exposure to U.S. stocks. So they want to own the biggest, most liquid index. Interesting. We're going to continue our conversation with John Carlson. When we come back, how much monthly income can my money generate? I want my money to make a lot of money, don't I? Well, we're going to talk to John about that when we come back. We're going to also chat a little bit about four big incentives for homeowners to sell now. All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Our offer number is 800-306-1990-800-306-1990. Or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you paying rent because you think you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you renting because you don't believe that you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? The Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com, licensed under NMLS 2170-37. Ron is my lender .com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate below 3.5% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $300,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,300 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L, LendingTeam.com. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed to NMLS ID 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. 
Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text. SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. The Digest tells you exactly what the county recorder knows about your property, exactly what the market believes about your property. Four big incentives for homeowners to sell now. Housing market keeps sailing along. The only headwind that could take it off course is the lack of inventory for sale. NAR, the National Association of Realtors, reports that there were 400 10,000 fewer single-family homes for sale this March than in March of 2020. The key to continued success in the residential housing market is for more listings to come on the market. However, many homeowners are concerned that selling their homes could be challenging for several reasons. Recently, Homes.com released the findings of a survey that identified these concerns, as well as what it will take for homeowners to feel more comfortable selling their houses. Here are the four major homeowner concerns and a quick explanation of what's actually happening in the housing market today. Number one, homeowners don't know if they'll be able to secure their next home before selling. Eh, Well, I wonder why that would be when the administration now says they're going to have a first-time home buyer's uh, tax credit. Maybe we need to incentivize the seller, Mr. President, not the buyers. Number two, homeowners don't know if the current home will sell for asking price or top market price. Well, give us a call at 800 306 1990. 53 days from the time you list your house till you get a check in the hand, always at the top of the market, or almost always at the top of the market, because we create the bidding war. Number three, homeowners don't know if they will get an offer without their home requiring work or updates. Well, we can solve that for you. Homeowners don't know if they can have quick closing process. I will give you introductions to the people that know how to do that. Take a look at the days on the market. If you're watching us on RonSingerRadio.tv, any of our social channels are the ABC News and Talk AM 1490 video feed. You're seeing a chart right now that shows the days on market here in Calizuela. We're at about 15 to 30 days on the market. Regarding the time it will take to close the transaction, all cash sales accounted for 23% of all home purchase transactions in March. All cash sales can usually be closed in 30 days. We'll give you 53 and get you more money. What do you think? I don't do it. I'm, I've, got, I've got people that know how to do that stuff. I am not a, re, well, I have a real estate license, but I don't use it. Bottom line, selling your house can be daunting, especially in a fast-paced market. However, the fact that we're in such a strong seller's market clearly eliminates many common concerns. Let's connect so we can show you how to make these things happen in the best possible way for you and your family. That is the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. Continue our conversation. John Carlson is in the house, Raymond James Financial Services. We're chatting about retiring. Do you want to retire? Do you have any plans to retire? I'm going to share with you a very simple scenario. And a lot of people, I think, miss this. But I'm going to share my thought with you, and then we'll get John's thought on top of that. How do you possibly know how to get where you want to get if you don't know it? Right? You know I want to retire in 20 years. What's it going to take? Do you know that? Or you just say, I'm going to, I'm going to retire in 20 years. I hope I can, I can do it. Hope is not a plan. Right? So how much money do you need in retirement? I don't know. Let's ask John. He's the expert. How much do we, how do we figure out? Is there, is there a rule of thumb? So if, say I, I'm a, what is a median household right now is about 56,000, $58,000, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Let's just, I mean, let's call it 60 cause I'm a simple guy. Okay. If I'm 50 years old, is there a rule of thumb as to what I need to save? Because if I'm going to, so what do they say? I'm going I'm to be in retirement 20 years now, 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Well, the typical life expectancy, if you made it to 50, could easily be in the mid to late 80s. Okay. Unless you have a lot of health complications. Um, Social Security is part of the equation. Right. Um, most people will qualify for that. And then they have to figure out whether they're taking it as early as age 62 with a big haircut 
or as late as age 70. So for a lot of people, that's usually where the conversation starts. And then they have to think about not just how much they have to save, but how much risk they can take between now and when they plan to retire. And then once they start to piece that together, they have to think about what their lifestyle is going to be like in retirement and how much cash flow they'll actually need. Do we spend more in retirement than we do on a whole? I mean, not, not in the individual. I know you can't tell me what you know my next door neighbor is going to spend in retirement, right? But on a whole, do we spend more in retirement than our working years or do we spend less in retirement in our working years? Depends. It's different for everybody, really. Um, okay. What I've seen as a trend with my clients is typically spend the most in their first five years of retirement okay. when they're healthy when they want to be active, when they've had some trips they've been putting off and they're just tired of putting them off and they go see everyone and do everything for the first few years and markets have been doing well. So that's a little more workable right now, but in hard times that wouldn't be doable. You'd have to really work with your professional to make sure that you don't overextend. That's a, that's a good thought. So, so when you, when you talk to clients, families that you're working with on, on this kind of planning, do you taper the needs over time? Is that, is that a norm or is it, is it always different? It's always different. And so it's good to have a plan. Um, an expression that we use in our business is if, if you fail to plan, then you will plan to fail. Ah, okay. Because if you don't spec it out, if you don't kind of put the specifics of what you're thinking of doing and start to refine it a little bit and look at the plan and see how that would work and see what your money balance might be two years into your retirement, four years in, five years in, assuming some fluctuation, assuming some headaches, some hiccups, some good news, all those things. If you don't have an idea of where the kind of boundaries are, it's easy to have a mistake and to really damage your lifelong income. How much time do you do you generally talk to people about having? I, I talk on on radio all the time on our, with all of our our friends here that are listening. I share the idea that you know have, once you start getting closer to your retirement, twelve to twenty four months of total liquidity, and let the other part of the money that way on a day like today you're not selling because I have to pay the rent or pay taxes. Mm -hmm. um, is 12, 24 months, is that still a, as far as an emergency fund or cash on hand? Is that something that's still uh, a norm? It just it depends on how much the client's planning to spend, number one. Number two, it depends on how volatile their investments are, how much they fluctuate. Okay. And so if somebody has an all stock portfolio, then something like 12 to 24 months could be smart because then you don't you could take the stock market out of that equation for part of that time. Um, but generally speaking, if they have some other stable investments, you know, money markets and bonds and things, those are technically invested, but they're not expected to have the type of decline a stock or, or a stock ETF or a stock mutual fund might. Gotcha. Okay. So, so that kind of brings me into another concept that I hear all the time, especially when we talk about uh, our retirement funds, our 401ks, and, and although I'm not a fan of 401ks, um, but asset allocations. Can you explain what that is, what it means? Yeah. So um, if you think of stocks and bonds as the old fashioned way to just get diversification, okay. um, you might think, well, I'll do 50% in each and that'll help smooth out the bumps. And that's exactly what it does. Historically, going back a century or so, if you owned a basket of half stocks and half bonds, that tends to protect you on the downside so you don't lose as much as an all stock portfolio. You give up a little bit on the upside but you have a smoother ride and you get a rate of return that typically is better than cash. Okay. It's better than ultra conservative bonds like treasuries Okay. Um, over long periods of time. Over short periods of time, any one of those things can do better. Cash can be the best performing investment on a given day or week or month or year in the market. Sure, that makes sense. Right. So do you, do you adjust that asset allocation over time? As I get older, am I going to go heavier one way or the other way or... My kids, are they going to have the same asset allocation that I am? Uh, so, yes, you adjust it. Um, the number of adjustments you do really depends on how much fluctuation you can tolerate. So in the okay. last year with COVID, uh, we saw really the mother of all corrections in that crash during the COVID period. Sure. And then we saw one of the quickest snapbacks in history. So if you just left things alone, chances are you wouldn't have made a giant mistake. But if that was too hard for you, if you had advice on how to adjust and do it either piecemeal or partially and not really do you know, wide sweeping changes, uh, generally speaking, that would help protect your long-term plan. So the idea there is to, to sit down with somebody like yourself and say, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to, so John, I want to retire in, in, at age 65 or 64. And then you're going to, you kind of put out, a, uh, I hate to say it, but an old Thomas guide. 
right? And you're gonna give me the map as to how to get to where I wanna go? That's right, yeah. And we have our tools and we have you know, beautiful charts and, and indicators of how things would look over a long period of time. And they're not promises, but they're a, a, guide, a guide path kind of. And then um, helping people figure out whether they need much in stocks or not, whether they are too conservative and want a lot of guarantees. Those are possible in certain products. And, um, and then helping them understand the costs involved on all those things. And then keeping them updated on how it changes each year, including with taxes. That, that, that's obvious. Well, that's kind of uh, kind of this. That's probably more uh, uh, volatile, especially nowadays than even the market is understanding taxes. Between you got one administration that says low taxes, the next administration that says high taxes, and where do you go from there? We just kind of guess. That's right. So we're already starting to get a lot of questions here with taxes. They've actually slowed down a little bit because the tax deadline got moved out to May 17th uh, from April 15th. So we have some extra time, but I expect the second half of this year will be a frenzy of are we fully positioned, ready for the changes in 2022? Um, but it's, it's a fun conversation with clients about how to strategize and how to adjust things to account for that. It's fascinating. And again, it goes back to what your risk taxes then become part of your risk, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. Yes. Because if you have all money that has not been taxed and you go into retirement and you start pulling it all out and driving your tax rate higher and higher and higher as your tax rates are going up on a national level or a state level, you could have the worst outcome you expected. Interesting. So you made a comment there that I think we want to get, want to get into when we come back, but have it taxed or not taxed. So I can actually grow my money and it's not taxed. Yes. Wow. We're going to talk about how to do that when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, taxes. We're going to talk about that. And we've got a featured home brought to you by my favorite lender.net. All that and more. You can reach me anytime off air number 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter at Ron Siegel, and if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation mortgage adoption plan. You be the judge if it's right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to map at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporation and MLS 217037 and VCAL BRE number 0186945. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at ronismylender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at ronismylender.com. Again, ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. ronismylender.com. 
Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. At 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, the featured home segment today being brought to you by MyFavoriteLender.net. Who's got the featured home? I'm sure we can find it. I bet the team's going to put it on the screen in any second now if you're watching us on RonSegalRadio.tv, any of the social channels or ABC News and Talk AM 1490, the video feed. 5508 East Vista Del Rio, Anaheim Hills. Renee Whitman has the property. Two bedrooms, two full bathrooms, single story. That's good for those of us who have a serious knee problem like me. Right? We like that single story home. Rancho Yorba, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, attached two car garage, plantation shutters throughout, no one above or below, single family residence. Like that. That makes it a little easier. FHA VA welcome. Walking distance to Pelanconi Park. Hmm. All that, you know, so Anaheim, it says Anaheim Hills here, $534,900 in Anaheim Hills. Who says you can't buy something that's somewhat affordable in Anaheim Hills? Put 5% down, you're looking at $2,177 a month. Put 10, 20% down, you're looking at $1,833 a month. 25% down strategically, $1,638 per month. That's principal and interest only. You have to add the taxes, insurance, mortgage insurance, if there is any HOA dues. And for those of you keeping score, and I know you compliance people are, 3.483 APR, 3.194 APR, 2.98 APR, and MLS 217037. Hey, if you want more information on this or any property, give me a call at 800-306-1990. This one happens to be from Renee Whitman over at First Team. That is the featured home segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79. I'm sorry, text uh, myfavoritelender.net is the one we've got right there. So we are chatting this morning. John Carlson is in the house. Raymond James Financial. We've been talking about finances. And no, he's not going to tell you what stock to buy today when the market is down. We don't do that on Ron Siegel Radio, even though. You know, he knows a lot more than me. That's not what we do here. What we want to talk about is globally, 30,000 foot level. How do we deal with finances? How do we make plans for our future? And uh, is there some ways of dealing with taxes? Is that part of the strategy? So I hear about these all the time, John. Roth IRA, traditional IRA. What do you like, or more importantly, what are the differences? Because I'm, what do you like is probably an answer for every individual person. But what, what is the difference between that Roth IRA and the traditional IRA? And is there a difference this year under some of the tax programs? So I thought I heard something about one of the taxes that may have even expired, but you can take money out of a, tra- a traditional IRA without the penalty under COVID. Yeah, I I won't get into all the details about those special rules related to COVID because it gets complicated and you want to definitely check with your accountant. That's the part I wanted right there. So there are things that are going on that we can that that are that that are unique right now that you can talk to a financial the the CPA or tax people about. There especially were um, over the past over 2020. Okay. And now with the deadline extended, there may be between now and May 17th. But that's a great question for your accountant. You got to sign off on your your uh, tax return anyway before then, so you w- might as well engage him or her. So that's one of the things I love doing on Ron Single Radio is is telling people, hey, go ask your financial planner this, or go talk ask your tax person this because even though we may know the answer, they're the ones that are dealing with that part of the plan. I bet you're part of a team. 
I, I am. I right. am. And, and I love when accountants get involved with our discussions with clients because then it's an even bigger team. Right. Right. And then those uh, people are really invested in what the client's doing, including on a savings level and investment level with IRAs. Sure. So often accountants are trying to do whatever they can to save you money in the, 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 the current tax year. But longer term planning is hard to do when you're focused on each tax year and sure. trying to dodge a bullet, right? Those guys are dealing with, from what I understand, 20 or 30 hours of updates every year. So they get their licenses, they, they become experts in it, yeah. and then every year they've got to deal with 20 or 30 hours worth of changes. Yes. I don't want to deal with that. I don't either. <laughs> so explain to us the difference just from a global level of a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. Okay, so very simply, a Roth IRA, if your income is not too high, you and or your spouse can qualify to contribute money to a Roth IRA each tax year. Now, you're still able to make that contribution if you qualify up until your tax deadline. So okay. with the tax deadline extended to May 17th, you may have an opportunity to make a contribution to a Roth IRA if your income is not too high. So you have to check with your accountant on that. And then also if you have earned income. So you have to have earned income. It can't just be portfolio dividends or oh, okay. pass passive income. It has to, you have to check with your accountant about that. And then the Roth IRA, that, that obviously we want it to grow. So that's when we talk to you about how to make it grow. That's right. And is it taxed? When I take it out or the Roth IRA, how is that taxed? Right. So the Roth IRA, the way the law is currently, it is tax free when you withdraw the money if you do it after age 59 and a half. Okay. okay. And so that's a special rule. So you get to put in money after taxes when you contribute if you're if you're allowed. And then when you remove it, it's tax free. Um, after age 59 and a half, whereas a traditional IRA, you're putting in money that can be pre-tax, doesn't okay. have to be, and then you're removing that money and it's taxed at ordinary income tax rates on a federal and state level. Interesting. So it could be after-tax money that goes into that traditional IRA too. That's right. And then that gets a little more complicated because you have different, um, you know, different treatment of withdrawals from that IRA. Interesting. So... Obviously, we do a lot of talking on Ron Segal Radio about home and finance. So stocks and real estate, is there any kind of a, a rule of thumb as to percentage? I mean, we know that for most of us, our real estate is going to be our largest investment. Do you recommend going more into that, less into that, pulling, you know, how do you how do you balance our portfolio? And I know some I've talked to some people, and they say their financial planner doesn't even look at their real estate portfolio or their social security when they're dealing with a financial plan. You already told us that you look at social security. Yes. Does the real estate portfolio fit into that as well? I love talking with real estate about clients because, like you said, it's usually their largest asset. Um, but I like to teach them about the cash flow that that real estate is currently generating or might be able to generate. So picture that you have a million-dollar house and picture that you're getting $3,000 a month. If you kept that rent rate the same, and it was $36,000 a year, 3,000 times 12, that's a 3.6% cash flow yield gross on that real estate before taxation and things like that. But then you can compare that 3.6 to other alternatives. So on bonds, you might get one rate. On stocks, you might get a lower rate, but more potential for growth and potential for dividend increases. So it's worth evaluating the pros and cons of each. So seems to me like it would make sense to have some of everything. Generally, yes, and that's a better plan for diversification, but it also depends on how much it ties up your money. Okay. So like we talked about, if stocks decline too much, your money's relatively illiquid unless you make a big mistake and sell. If your bonds are really long-term bonds, 30-year bonds or longer, that may be tied up pretty long too. Sure. Right. And so real estate also, we don't know how able you are to sell. Now in California, I think things are pretty red hot. It's probably pretty easy to sell a home in California. Um, but that doesn't mean that you'll get your money as quickly as you need it for your next purchase. So I think the bottom line of what I've learned, what I share all the time is make sure you've got enough liquidity, whatever that means for you, so that you're not forced to do something so you can follow the plan. Sounds like a good plan. Right. Don't uh, don't let your gas tank go down to empty and then be forced to try and find a gas station. Right. Right. Because you may not find one. Correct. Right. If you keep that gas tank over half, you never have to worry about, OK, did I find it or didn't I find it? Same with your stocks and bonds and, and real estate. Right. I want to sell it when my financial advisor tells me is a good time to sell instead of the forced time. That's right. Or if you have a, a concern, reach out to your advisor and talk with them. Same thing with taxes. I have a concern. Rates are going up. Reach out to your tax expert. 
Well, you have a concern about the market or fluctuations, reach out to your advisor, have a conversation, take the emotion down a notch and get some more information that generally helps us make better decisions. My bet is, is that you're going to be a lot less emotional about your client's money because you're more experienced than the client is themselves. That's exactly right. And so that's why it's, a, it's good to have that kind of partner. And then also I have access to so much information and so much expert advice through my firm that it's easy to give a client data points that help them be as rational as possible about what they're doing next. So here's my thought about this. So I do a little radio show and I lead a lending team and you might be a plumber or a gardener or a lawyer or whatever you do. Do you think that I could do what you do in my spare time or part time? I doubt it. Do you think you could do, why do so many people think that they can do what John does, spare time or part time? Doesn't work. Now, if you maybe want to put four or five, 10% of your money to work and play with it, that's what I call play. It's not real. It's playing with it in the markets. Hey, go for it. If you're 90% of your money and your life plan and your family's future, put it in with a, a professional. And I don't get paid to say that. I just tell you what I believe on a regular basis. And if you want more information, you want to meet John Carlson, give me a call. 800-306-1990. And as always, I ask you, set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John and Sean for engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 306 1990 or ronsegoradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ronsegoradio.